KLM 4805 Pan Am 1736. The KLM aircraft was a Boeing 747-206B. Registration PHBUF. Flying charter flight 4805 from Amsterdam to Gran Canaria. But due to a bomb threat at their destination, it was diverted to Tenerife. At the same time, Pan Am Flight 1736, a Boeing 747-121 from Los Angeles, was also forced to land at Tenerife for the same reason. Both planes were now stuck at a small airport that wasn't built to handle such heavy traffic, especially not two jumbo jets at once. The weather made things worse. Thick fog covered the runway, cutting visibility down to just a few hundred feet. When flights were finally cleared to leave, both aircraft were told to taxi on the same runway, one behind the other. Amid the confusion, miscommunication with air traffic control, and vague instructions, the KLM captain believed he had been cleared for takeoff. But the Pan Am jet was still on the runway, slowly searching for its exit in the fog. The KLM plane accelerated and tried to take off early to fly over the Pan Am aircraft, but it was too late. The KLM's lower fuselage and engines slammed into the Pan Am jet. Both aircraft exploded into flames. The KLM flight was completely destroyed, killing all 248 people on board. On the Pan Am jet, 335 died. Only 61 people survived. Investigators from Spain, the Netherlands, and the US found the main cause was the KLM captain's decision to take off without confirmed clearance. Fog, radio miscommunication, and cockpit hierarchy added to the disaster. This tragedy led to worldwide reforms, like standardized radio calls, mandatory collision avoidance systems, and crew training that encouraged co-pilots to speak up when something felt wrong. Japan Airlines Flight 123 The aircraft was a Boeing 747-SR-46, registration JA-8119, delivered in 1974. By 1985, it had flown over 25,000 hours and had gone through nearly 19,000 pressurization cycles. On August 12th, it was flying a short domestic route from Tokyo's Haneda Airport to Osaka's Itami Airport, a popular flight for business and local travel. Just 12 minutes after takeoff, while cruising at 24,000 feet, a loud explosion ripped through the rear of the plane. The aft pressure bulkhead, an important part that holds cabin pressure, suddenly broke apart. The blast tore off the entire vertical stabilizer and destroyed all four hydraulic systems. The jet was now uncontrollable. With no control surfaces left, the crew had only one option, to steer using uneven engine thrust. For the next 30 minutes, the plane rocked violently, rising and falling in terrifying waves as it drifted through the skies over central Japan. Eventually, it crashed into Mount Tagamagahara, northwest of Tokyo. Of the 524 people on board, only four survived. The investigation found the root of the disaster hidden in a repair done seven years earlier. After a tail strike, the aft bulkhead had been fixed incorrectly. Instead of using one solid splice plate with three rows of rivets, as Boeing required, technicians used two separate plates with weak fasteners. This reduced the structure's strength. Over time, cracks grew with each flight until the bulkhead gave way under pressure. Saudia Flight 763 The aircraft was a Boeing 747-168B, registration HZAIH, flown by Saudi Arabian Airlines. On November 12, 1996, it took off from Delhi, heading to Jeddah with a stop in Tehran. On board were 312 people, mostly Indian workers on their way to jobs in the Middle East. Just minutes after takeoff, while climbing through 14,000 feet, disaster struck. Out of the clouds came another aircraft, Kazakhstan Airlines Flight 1907, an Ilyoshin IL-76 descending for arrival in Delhi. It had been cleared to stay at 15,000 feet, but the crew descended lower than instructed. In seconds, the two planes collided mid-air. The IL-76's wing tore through the left side of the 747. At the same time, the 747's stabilizers ripped off the Kazakh aircraft's tail. The Saudi jet spiraled out of control and broke apart midair, slamming into fields west of Delhi at nearly 705 miles per hour. The Kazakh aircraft entered a spin and crashed nearby. All 349 people on both flights were killed. No one survived. The investigation, led by the Lahodi Commission, pointed to serious errors in the Kazakh cockpit. The crew didn't hold altitude and misunderstood air traffic instructions, partly due to poor English skills and reliance on their radio operator to communicate. Neither aircraft had a collision avoidance system at the time. This tragedy became one of the world's deadliest mid-air collisions. It forced major changes in aviation. India made traffic collision avoidance systems mandatory, and international authorities improved controller training, altitude rules, and English language standards in cockpits around the world. Lion Air Flight 610 the aircraft was a Boeing 737 MAX 8, flown by Lion Air. It had only joined the airline a few months earlier, in August 2018. 
On October 29th, it took off from Jakarta for a short domestic flight to Pankal Penang, carrying 189 people on board. Just 13 minutes into the flight, everything began to spiral out of control. While climbing over the Java Sea, the plane's sensors started feeding wrong information to the aircraft's flight control system, known as MCAS. These sensors had been poorly calibrated after maintenance. The faulty data told the system the plane was climbing too steeply, so MCAS reacted by forcing the nose down. The pilots kept fighting back, trying to lift the nose up again and again, but the system kept overriding them. For 11 minutes, the jet climbed and dove in an erratic, terrifying pattern until it plunged into the sea at full speed, killing everyone on board. The investigation by Indonesia's safety board, along with U.S. experts, found a series of deadly mistakes. The sensor had likely been fixed improperly. The MCAS system was deeply flawed and wasn't even mentioned in pilot training or manuals. The pilots had no idea it existed. They also didn't follow the emergency checklist correctly, because they didn't know what they were dealing with. Boeing and the FAA were heavily blamed for ignoring how real pilots might react to multiple warning signals and for not demanding simulator training on this new system. But years before anyone had heard of the MAX 8 or MCAS, another crash had exposed how dangerous a single faulty reading could be, long before software ever entered the picture. Air India Flight 182 The aircraft was a Boeing 747-237B, named Emperor Kanishka Registration VTEFO, delivered to Air India in July 1978. On June 23, 1985, it was operating a scheduled international flight from Toronto to Bombay with stopovers in Montreal, London, and Delhi. Most of the passengers were Canadian residents of Indian origin, returning home through Europe and India. About 45 minutes before its scheduled landing in London, while flying high over the Atlantic near Ireland's south coast, the plane suddenly broke apart in midair. No distress call was ever made. Radar signals vanished, and wreckage was later found scattered across 30 square nautical miles of ocean. The explosion in the forward cargo hold caused the front section of the aircraft to separate first, leading to a rapid loss of control and a deadly plunge into the sea. All 329 people on board, 307 passengers and 22 crew members were killed. Evidence from recovered bodies and parts of the wreck showed clear signs of explosive decompression and brutal vertical impact, pointing to a powerful blast inside the forward cargo hold. Investigators from Canada, along with teams from India and the UK, confirmed the cause. A bomb had been hidden inside a Czech suitcase by Sikh extremist operatives. The explosion ripped through the aircraft mid-flight. Only one man, Indrajit Singh Riyat, was ever convicted for building the bomb. The others walked free due to a lack of evidence. The aftermath exposed serious failures. Intelligence wasn't shared. Baggage wasn't screened properly. Airport security was weak. The bombing became the deadliest terrorist attack in Canadian aviation history and forced a complete overhaul of the country's anti-terror and aviation security laws. Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302 The plane was a brand new Boeing 737 MAX 8, only delivered to Ethiopian Airlines a few months earlier, in November 2018. It had flown just 1,330 hours. On March 10, 2019, it was operating a regular flight from Addis Ababa to Nairobi, a short, routine route often used by business travelers, UN workers, and tourists. But just six minutes after takeoff, the unimaginable happened. The plane crashed near the town of Bishoftu, about 40 miles southeast of Addis Ababa. All 157 people on board, 149 passengers, and eight crew died in an instant. The black box revealed a horrifying pattern. An onboard system called MCAS kept pushing the plane's nose down over and over again. This software was designed to prevent the aircraft from stalling, but it was operating on incorrect data from a faulty sensor. The pilots fought back, following emergency procedures, disabling parts of the system, but nothing worked. The aircraft climbed unevenly, then plunged downward at a terrifying speed, nearly 700 miles per hour, before slamming into the ground with such force that it left a massive crater. The investigation, led by Ethiopian authorities and supported by the US and France, confirmed it. The MCAS software was the main cause. It was poorly designed and relied on a single sensor, leaving no room for error. The final report, released in December 2022, was clear. Boeing system forced the plane into an unstoppable dive, and the world would never be the same again. Jeju Air Flight 2216 The aircraft was a Boeing 737-800, operated by Jeju Air. It was flying from Bangkok to Muan in South Korea on a seasonal route that had only recently started to bring holiday travelers back home after Christmas. On December 29, 2024, everything was going smoothly until the plane neared Muan for landing. Suddenly, a large flock of birds struck the aircraft. Later tests revealed the birds were bicaltial ducks, 
Both engines sucked them in. The right engine was badly damaged. The left engine, however, was still functioning. But in the middle of the chaos, something went terribly wrong. The pilots under intense pressure accidentally shut down the left engine, which was the only one still providing power. This left the plane with no thrust at all. At the same time, the landing gear was never lowered. With no power and no landing gear, the pilots attempted a belly landing. The plane hit the runway hard, skidded over 5,200 feet, and crashed straight into a concrete wall located at the end of the runway. A massive fireball followed. Out of 181 people on board, only two survived, and both were crew members. Investigators later confirmed that shutting down the only working engine was a tragic mistake made under pressure. But there was another issue. That concrete wall, solid and unbreakable, should never have been there. Experts said if the airport had used collapsible safety materials, like those used in most international airports, the crash might not have been so deadly. But it wasn't the first time this exact failure had killed hundreds. Bergen Air Flight 301 The aircraft was a 12-year-old Boeing 757, operated by Turkish airline Bergen Air for a Dominican carrier. On February 6, 1996, it was flying German tourists home from the Dominican Republic with stopovers in Canada and Berlin before reaching Frankfurt. Right after takeoff from Puerto Plata, something wasn't right. The captain's airspeed indicator was showing over 350 miles per hour, far too fast for that stage of flight. While the first officer showed around 250 miles per hour, the readings didn't match, but the crew pressed on. Once in the air, they switched on the autopilot, which relied on the captain's faulty instruments. As a result, the plane's nose slowly tilted upward, while the engines throttled back. Then, alarms began to scream. First, an overspeeding warning, then a stall warning. The crew, unsure which alert to trust, cut the power. It was a fatal mistake. With less thrust and the nose still pointing up, the plane stalled. The left engine shut down. The jet rolled upside down and plunged into the Atlantic Ocean just 15 miles from the airport. All 189 people on board died. Investigators later found the cause. The captain's airspeed reading was wrong because a pitot tube, which is part of the system that measures airspeed, had been blocked. It was likely clogged by a wasp nest after the plane sat unused for 20 days. No one had covered the opening. The crash exposed serious gaps in training, maintenance, and warning system design. It led to global changes in how pilots are trained to handle bad instrument data and how airlines protect planes sitting idle in insect-prone climates. But sometimes, the danger isn't in the cockpit, or even in the software. It's buried deep inside the plane itself, quietly growing over decades, until one day, it tears everything apart midair. China Airlines Flight 611 The aircraft was a Boeing 747-200, tail number B18255, delivered to China Airlines in August 1979. By May 2002, it had completed over 64,800 flight hours. On May 25th, it was flying a regular international route from Taipei to Hong Kong, commonly used by both business and holiday travelers. Around 20 minutes after takeoff, while climbing nearly 35,000 feet over the Taiwan Strait, the aircraft suddenly disintegrated midair. There was no distress call. Radar contact was lost, and debris from the jet was later found scattered across 35 square miles of ocean. The breakup started at the lower rear section of the fuselage. The tail section tore away first, leading to an uncontrollable dive into the sea. All 225 people on board, including 206 passengers and 19 crew members, were killed. Investigators from Taiwan's Aviation Safety Council, with support from the U.S. NTSB, FAA, Boeing, and Pratt & Whitney identified the cause as severe metal fatigue in the rear fuselage. This weakness had developed from a flawed repair following a tail strike incident in 1980. Instead of removing the damaged skin and scratches as required by Boeing's repair manual, the airline had simply covered the area with a metal doubler plate, leaving the original damage hidden beneath. Over 22 years of pressurization cycles caused cracks to slowly spread through the weakened structure. On that day in May, the damage reached its breaking point. The final report, released in 2005, revealed critical maintenance failures, poor inspections, and a lack of proper oversight. It led to global changes in how airlines inspect, repair, and monitor aging aircraft structures, especially those with a history of damage. 